Praise the Lord. God is so good that he sends us his best. God sends us the servants of the Lord that have a word in due season. And what you're about to hear is how we have grown here at Rock City Church because we invite people to come in that have a real word from God, men that and women that love God with all their hearts and have great integrity. And we bring them in to bless us here at this local church. And we get to share that blessing with you, the audience. Those of you that view this by video and by YouTube, you get to view what God does here at Rock City Church. It's a great time and a great uh, experience when we can come and uh, sit together and hear the word of the Lord and know that we're being uh, trained and we're being equipped to do all that God has us to do for his kingdom. So I bless you and I know you're going to enjoy the speaker today because he's got a word from the Lord just for you. God bless you. Enjoy the word. The opposite of love is not hate, but it's indifference. The opposite of, of life isn't death, but it's indifference. Indifference is a a lack of concern, no particular interest, or apathy. You know, sometimes people ask us questions and we're, we're indifferent. It doesn't really matter. You know, what do you want to eat today? Uh, indifferent. And, and indifferent is, is, you know, it doesn't really concern you. It doesn't really matter. Whatever it is, is fine. And, and there's times where, where indifference is okay, but what we're talking about today is indifference when, when the warnings of God come. When God brings warnings, there's many times throughout Scripture where, where the people have been like, mm, whatever, doesn't matter. And they've suffered the consequences for it. And there's other times where people have heard the word, heard the warning, and they responded in the right way. And I want to look at a story about that today. If you could look at um, your Scripture to Jonah chapter 3. Open up to Jonah chapter 3. And uh, this is an amazing story about a people that were, were extremely wicked. And, and they heard the warning from God and they responded in the right way. They responded and, and things changed uh, around everything that they did. You know, we, we live in a day where we're talking about our nation and we're looking at our nation and we can see things that, are, that aren't right, things that are out of line and, and the warnings of God are coming and how we respond to those warnings is very critical about our future. And uh, Jonah chapter 3 and verse 3, it says, Now Nineveh, was an exceedingly great city, a three-day journey in extent. It took three days just to walk across this city. And Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk. Then he cried out and said, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth, from the greatest to the least of them. Then word came to the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth and in ashes, and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil way and from violence that is in his hands. Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we may not perish? Then God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God relented from the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Amen. They heard the warning from Jonah and they decided, you know what, we're going to heed this warning. We're going to respond and we're not, we're, we don't want the judgments of God to come. You know, God gives plenty of warnings. He gives us a whole lot of warnings. Just as, as parents, we give warnings to our kids. God gives us so many warnings. And think about it. The king heard this and responded and he even had the animals fast. Yeah. You know, you can't feed your dog today. The cat gets no water today because we're crying out to God. And you know, even the animals put on sackcloth. They had the sackcloth on the animals. You know, there was a real deep-rooted repentance there, and, and God heard that and responded. Hebrews 12, 25, it gives us an example of, of when, a, when a warning comes. 
And it says in verse 25 of Hebrews 12, See that you do not refuse he who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, how much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven? All right, so if we can't listen to the warnings from man, how much more so, and not escape, how much more so are we going to not listen to the warnings from God and not escape? You know, and God is so merciful because it's like, it's, it's broke, we get it fixed, and then we break it again. And it's a good thing his mercy's new every morning or, or we'd be done over with. Because how many times have you blown it? Many. Lord, I'll never do it again. I mean, this time, I'll never do it again. <laughs> time after time after time, thank, thank the Lord he's so merciful to us that, that, that when we're repentant and we come back to him, he, he forgives us. He says if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Thank God for that promise. And many times, people do something wrong, they repent, and then they go around holding the, the guilt and the shame of that thing. And what they're saying is, is, Lord, I don't believe that you forgave me. Because he forgave you. That's his part. Your part is to confess it and let it go, not to carry it anymore. So God is faithful in that when we come to him. But many times we don't, we say like they did in Jeremiah, this is hopeless. There's no way out of this. There's nothing we can do to change. We're stuck the way that we are. And when we do that, we're exalting our own strength rather than what God can do by our confession. Amos chapter 4 and verse 6. It says, also I gave you cleanness of teeth in all your cities. Cleanness of teeth. I was thinking about this. So God gave them dentists <laughs> in their cities as punishment to deal with their, with their not a heeding to his warnings. Now, what, what cleanness of teeth means is they didn't have any food. Because when, when, when you eat food, it gets stuck in your teeth. When you're not eating, there ain't nothing stuck in your teeth. So God gave them cleanness of teeth. There was no food. Uh, I also give you cleanness of teeth in all your cities and a lack of bread in all your places. Yet you've not returned to me, says the Lord. So remember, the Lord goes in a sequence. First, he gets our attention with blessing us. And, and, and what we do when the blessing comes is, is we rise up and forget the Lord. Then he says, okay, that's not working. Let me take away from them. Let me, take them, let, let me take away the temporal so they can grab hold of the eternal. They can grab hold of the bigger blessing that's there for them. So it says that he, he took away their food, gave them, gave them dentist and clean teeth. And it says, yet they've not returned to me. All right, so then he says, what else do I need to do? What else do I need to do that, that they would return to me? Verse 7, I also withheld rain from you when there were still three months to the harvest. I made it rain on one city, I withheld rain from another city. All right, so, so God was incorporating supernatural activity, it is taking away. Because how come it's raining here, but not raining here? Well, only God could be doing that. Why is he doing it? He's trying to get our attention. We didn't respond to the warning, so now he's slowly implementing the, the punishment. Will, 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 we get, will we recognize what's coming? that this doesn't just go away. It, it, it continues. It continues until, until we change. Uh, one part rained upon, and, and where it did not rain, the, the part withered. So, so, so there's a mountain where part of it's green and the other part of it's brown, right next to each other, because God sent rain on one part and not on the other part. Uh, some people who, who are running after God, uh, they're like a tree that that's leaves never wither. There's rain coming on their tree, and there's somebody right next to them that, that their tree's withering up. How is it that both of you are standing and live in the same neighborhood, in the same climate, but yet one of your trees are, are growing and thriving, and the other one, their leaves are falling off right here in the middle of harvest time? So two or three cities wandered to another city to drink water. So they went from one city to go to another city to get, to get drink, but they were not satisfied. Still didn't get their attention. And the Lord says, yet you've not returned to me, says the Lord. He didn't do these things for, for fun. He didn't do them because he enjoys afflicting us. He did them so that he could change us, so that our attitude and our, and our character and our life before him and our deeds would change. But you've not returned to me. 
I blasted you with blight and mildew. When your gardens increased, your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees, the locusts devoured them. So you, you, you think it's going to go, the trees are, are ready, they're going to bear fruit, and all of a sudden the locust comes now and devours everything up. You know, you, you're starting to get ahead and, and something comes in and the car breaks down. And what is, why is this thing that, that every time I, I go somewhere, but the Lord says, yet you've not returned to me. As we, as we try to do this in our own strength, as we try to ignore his warnings, the, the, the broadcast signals there. And it's like that annoying, that, that sound that you can't get away from. You know, and then it starts going. And all kind of noises at the end. You can't get away from this sound, this warning. But yet we, we, we try to do it in our own strength. We try to, to get past it. We try to say, how, how can I move along here and not change? Verse 10. I sent among you a plague after the manner of Egypt. Your young men I killed with the sword, along with your captive horses. I made the stench of your camps come up into your nostrils. Yet you've not returned to this. So if you notice, the, uh, the punishment is getting severe, severe, severe. I mean, first they just had dentists. Now, now the young men are getting slain with the sword on the street. Verse 11, I overthrew some of you as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And you were like a firebrand plucked from the burning. Yet, you have not returned to me. What else does he need to do to get their attention? Therefore, thus will I do to you, o Israel, because I will do this to you. Prepare to meet your God. Oh Israel, prepare to meet your God. I've done everything that I can do to get your attention and you won't listen, you won't respond. So, there's no other choice. Verse 13, for behold, he who forms mountains and creates the wind, who declares to man what his thoughts is, he makes the morning darkness, who treads the high places on the earth. The Lord God of hosts is his name. God will carry this out. He, he creates the earth. He's got all power. He'll carry this out. So will we heed the warnings? Now, let's think about where we are as a nation right now. We no longer produce what we need to sustain ourselves. We import much more than we export, meaning we, get, we have to bring more in than we send out. And we're selling off our assets and taking on massive debts to sustain a standard of living we can no longer afford. Yet, You've not returned to me, says the Lord. America's debt is nearly $16 trillion and growing and is going to have to be paid by somebody. Yet, you've not returned to me, says the Lord. A report on Thursday, October, August the 30th in 2012, it says the World Bank issues a hunger warning after droughts in the U.S. and Europe. Damage to crop harvest from exceptionally dry weather this year raises sharply the price of food. Yet, you've not returned to me, says the Lord. What does he have to do to get people's attention, to get our attention as a nation? The new, these are some examples of news stories that, that were printed in April 2012. A tourist is beaten in Baltimore. Young people surround him and laugh. He's pummeled, stripped, and robbed. No one helps. They're too busy taping it on their smartphones and posting it on YouTube. Yet, you've not returned to me, says the Lord. We see surveillance tapes of flash mobs. A group of teenagers swarm into stores, rob everything they can, and run out. The phenomenon is on the rise across the country. Police now, now nickname it flash rob. So these young people go into the stores and they just go in in masses and they rob everything in the store. Take, take loads and, and just walk out with no consequence. Yet you, you've not returned to me, says the Lord. God is merciful. He, his mercy is new every morning. But he won't allow us to continue in wickedness. He won't allow us. He will do what he needs to do to get our attention. We must heed the word of the Lord and obey him and turn back to him as, as a nation. You know, he, sends us, he sends us blessings. He sends us warnings. 
He sends us affliction. He sends us destruction. All so that we would, we would return, that he would get our attention. The Lord sends us warnings. He sends us warnings, and we can no longer afford to be indifferent. Mm. That doesn't apply to me. It doesn't matter what happens. Whatever. And we can no longer afford to, to stand back and, and be non-concerned. That's what indifferent means, is not concerned or apathetic. They're not, not aware, not, not in tune, not engaged with it. We know this scripture, 2 Chronicles 7, 14. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and hear their land. So we need to move from a place of indifference to a place of making a difference. We can make a difference. We can really have an impact on the people that are around us, on our nation. We have to move from a place of being apathetic to a place, or be, a place of being indifferent to a place of, of really making a difference, getting engaged um, through prayer, through our giving, through our speaking. We can really make a difference. We can have an impact on people. If we return to Him, He'll return to us. We've got to pray. We've got to turn to God. And it's not lip service. He, he's really, he's after our heart. He's not after just us offering the sacrifice and saying, I gave God a few words or I gave God a little bit of time. He's after our whole heart. He's after a real turning, a real genuine turning.